Hi there Star Wars Collectors and welcome to another Bosk's Bounty video and welcome to another video where myself and my son open up some older figures from the 3.75 inch line and in this video we've got four figures to open for you we have one from the legacy collection we have one from the vintage collection 1.0 we have a 3.75 inch black series figure and we also have a 5 poa rogue one figure which essentially is never going to be released in the vintage collection so i definitely needed to open this one up for my display so if you do happen to enjoy the video don't forget to drop a like down below and are you ready for this yep i'm ready for that Right, let's go. So first of all, we are going to be opening Captain Nida from the Legacy Collection. And I want to say a big thank you to my buddy, John, the action figure grader. He actually purchased this for me uh, in the States because it was a lot cheaper over there and sent it as part of like a care package of other stuff that I'd ordered. Um, of course, I did pay for it. But of course, I just want to say a big thank you to John for helping me out with the delivery and everything. Um, the reason I got this figure or I wanted this figure is because we are going to be getting Admiral Piet next year and apparently that is going to be an all new sculpt. So I wanted to compare the most up to date sort of officer sculpt that we have with that one when it comes out. So for now we're going to open this one up and then when that one comes out next year we can do a comparison. There's the packaging, that classic Stormtrooper packaging. And Captain Nida, of course, he is the guy that loses the Millennium Falcon in The Empire Strikes Back. And uh, Vader basically punishes him for it. And you can see the little write-up about that there and some of the other figures from the line. Do we have any of these others, Little Bosk? Do we have any of those? We have the two Ugnaughts. We do, yeah. And that one there, I believe, was repacked into the Vintage Collection as well. I wouldn't mind that Luke Skywalker there from the Medical Frigate. I, I do need that one. With this figure, you get a part of the U3PO, which is a decent droid, really good figure, that one. And you obviously get his left leg there. Um, I'm lucky enough that I've already completed that figure, so he'll just be a spare part. There he is, Captain Nida, on the packaging. And we're going to open him up and check him out. All right, then, so here is Captain Nida out of the packaging. And what do you like about this figure, Little Boss? What I like about this figure is that it's got the exact same articulation as a vintage collection figure. It has, yeah. It's quite up to date. I'd say that he's missing ball jointed hips, which you don't necessarily need on a Imperial officer figure. And what do you, and well, what don't you like about it? That when you point his toes, there's a grey bit instead of black. Yeah, you've got that thing on the hinge where the hinge hasn't been painted black. We'll show you that in a second. And what else? And also his gun is really bent. Yeah, it is. So this figure has been in the packaging for over 10 years now, hasn't it? And I found that his legs were quite bowed. And also look at that blaster. <laughs> that is terrible. I think the only way you're going to be able to fix that is by putting it in some hot water and manipulating it and hopefully straightening it out. But there he is. That is Captain Nida. We're going to get a close up look at the head sculpt in a minute. The hat on him isn't removable or anything like that. But we'll take a closer look and check out the articulation. All right then. So there is the head sculpt of the figure. And I actually don't think they've done a bad job with that really considering how old this figure is. That looks pretty decent to me. So there he is with his rank insignia on his chest as well. That little sort of button on his on his hat there. And then as we look down the figure, there's that bent blaster again. So we'll just take that out. But yeah, little Bosk was right that in he has got sort of up to date articulation. He's got the uh, ball jointed shoulders and hinges at the elbows. So he hasn't got the swivel elbows. I don't think he's got any hinges at the wrist, just swivel wrists. He has the swivel at the torso. Uh, the head is on like a ball there and we have the swivel hips, but he does have knees. And then if we look at the boots here, you'll see that thing that Little Bosk was talking about. You've got that hinge, which is the color of the uh, figure rather than the boot paint, uh, which is something that they sort of try and fix these days with the newer figures. But I'm actually quite impressed with that head sculpt. It's not actually too bad. It kind of looks like him, so that's pretty good. But yeah, this is really one that I wanted to get so we can do a really good comparison of the Admiral Piet when they finally release that figure next year. And we can see how much the Imperial Officer sculpt has moved on in 10 plus years. So there he is. All right, let's move on to the next figure. All right, then. so next up we have the Super Battle Droid from Attack of the Clones on that Attack of the Clones card in the Vintage Collection TVC 1.0. 
I've never had one of these figures loose. So I'm really looking forward to getting this guy loose, especially as they featured in The Mandalorian when these guys drop down to save the young Din Djarin. So this is really why I want this figure to go with this one. So let's check him out. Let's have a look at the packaging real quick. All right then, so here is the Super Battle Droid. Brilliant image there. That is definitely from that scene in Attack of the Clones in the arena at the end there. And there he is in the bubble. What have you got to say about this one? This card bat's great, but it's in terrible condition. It is, yeah. I picked this one up from Echo Live for £15, I think it was, uh, with another figure as well. And it's in it's in terrible shape, you know. There's creases, there's dings on the corners. It's warped. It, it's terrible. So it's definitely not one that you'd want to keep on card. But I wanted him loose anyway, so that's absolutely fine. So we're going to open him up right now and check out the figure. And here is the figure out of the packaging. Yep, and little Bosk has posed him up there. He looks great. Um, this figure doesn't have too much articulation. It doesn't have ball jointed shoulders or hips. But to be honest, he's a bit robotic, isn't he? He doesn't really need them, but he has the elbows. He has the knees, doesn't have anything on the ankles. But this figure is more about the deco and what he can do with this particular hand because you definitely need him to be able to use that sort of heavy blaster that he has on that hand. That's what they're famous for, and it looks awesome. So what do you think, Little Boss? I think this figure's good enough to be reissued in the Vintage Collection. Yep, they could reissue this one, I guess. I think they don't really need to do too much to this one. Um, he's just a great-looking figure. So let's, let's take a closer look. All right, then, so there he is up close. You can see all the detail on there. He's like a sort of dull silver nice detailing on his armor and everything on his lower torso as you go down he's got a bit of weathering on his legs because of the arena which is pretty cool and that little red dot on his left shoulder you've got the arms there looking pretty cool so he does come with a blaster and that does remove from his hand you can take that out if you want but it's in there really really snug and as I said these are articulated so you can move them around so of course you know the famous thing that they do is basically move their arm like that and then walk walk along in formation shooting out of that part of their arm which is pretty cool so I do like that and he's got those bigger blasters on that sort of gauntlet so yeah, really, really cool. I'm so glad to have this one open now in my collection because as I said, I didn't have one of these before. And let's just quickly pose him up with the Death Watch Mandalorian. So there you go. Something like that will look pretty cool on the shelf or in your display or what have you. Awesome figure, this one. One of the, one of the best of the year. And yeah, we definitely need these guys from that scene. So that's pretty cool. All right, so the third figure we're going to be opening up in this video is in the 3.75 inch black series. He's number four. It's Biggs Dark Lighter. I've had this figure for a little while now and basically it's just time to open him up. I've got a few of the other pilots and he's just one of the last ones that I need for my little mini sort of group of pilots that I have. So let's take a look at the packaging here. We have the boring black series orange line going straight down there. Sort of an artist impression of Biggs. And on the back, nothing much going on whatsoever. This line was, was terrible, really. And uh, what do you think, Little Bosk? Because the glue is so bad on these cards, they put tape on it to make it not fall off. Yeah, yeah, they did. So you can see this tape here. That is just awful. They did that on the uh, Return of the Vintage Collection as well. For the first wave, a lot of them had the tape on there. And Little Bosk is absolutely right. A lot of the other figures that I've opened up recently on these videos where we open the figures, the bubble has already been off of the card already. So this one seems to be intact. The glue seems to be okay on this one. You could probably see there it's starting to come away. And that's why they put that tape on there, just to give it a bit of extra support. You can see there it's coming away. So really, really poor. Um, and the figure, I'd say, isn't going to be that amazing in terms of the head sculpt i think there are better bigs out there but this is probably the best one in terms of the actual figure itself but as i say i do need him for my pilot collection so let's get him out and take a quick look all right then, so here's bigs out of the packaging and as i said before i think there may be another figure of bigs perhaps from the legacy collection or something that actually does have a slightly better head sculpt one that's a bit more sort of accurate to the source material 
But this figure's pretty good. He's got a reasonably new sculpt in terms of the body. Not as new as the Luke Skywalker that we got in the vintage collection, but it's still pretty good as well. And you can see there his signature helmet that he has under his arm that fits perfectly over his head. The paint apps on mine are okay, I guess. You know, the figures back then were a little bit lifeless in terms of he looks very pale. Doesn't really have too much sort of life to his face and his eyes. That's what the photo reel really does well with all of our new figures. But there he is looking pretty good anyway. So what are your thoughts, little boss? Do you like him? Yeah, because he'll go really well with your X-Wing pilots from A New Hope. He will, yeah. We've got some of the other ones. And also, if you've got the original X-Wing from the TVC 1.0, that was actually Biggs's X-Wing. So you're going to need this figure to go with it. And really, we do need a Biggs in the vintage collection. I can imagine the card back for him right now. It'd be awesome. So there he is, really. Not too much else to say about the figure. He's an X-Wing pilot. Biggs Dark Lighter. Pretty cool. And finally, we are going to be opening up the Rogue One 2-pack of Moroff and the Scarif Stormtrooper Squad Leader. Now, I have no need for the Squad Leader because we do have him in the Vintage Collection now. He came in that awesome 4-pack with the Soft Goods Karma. This one has Plastic Karma. I am opening this purely for this guy because he's going to go really well with the Tank and Chira Imwe and some of the other figures that we have that I have set up with my tank. He's an awesome looking figure, an awesome looking sculpt. Of course, I very much doubt they're ever gonna release anything like that in the vintage collection, so I might as well use this figure. One thing I'm not gonna use is all of the backpack and these rocket firing things and everything. I just want the figure really, not really concerned with all this sort of play features. So let's get him out of the packaging and take a look. And here he is out of the packaging. I've taken the backpack out because that looks cool, but I'm not concerned about all of his big blasters and everything. He looks amazing. And it just shows you back in that line for the five POA figures, some of the figures, in fact, quite a few of them, the sculpts were really, really good. Obviously the problem is with these figures is that they can't hold the blasters and things in two hands. So, you know, you can only hold the blaster like that. You can't have him holding the barrel in one end and the handle in the other. That's a bit annoying, but look at the sculpt. He looks great, really good figure. And when you look at the sculpt on the back as well of his backpack, that looks fantastic as well. So really, really good figure to have in the collection because he's just going to literally just stand there looking cool with all the other figures. What do you think, little boss? Do you like him? I personally think that he looks like the Wampus little brother. <laughs> he does, yeah. He is very similar to that. He's definitely got the same sort of fur and everything like that. Um, his name's Moroff. If anyone wants to let me know in the comment section below what uh, type of creature this is, what his race is, then let me know because that is something that I do not know. But you see on the back there some really good details of all the different rounds of ammunition that he has on his backpack and missiles and things like that. Really, really cool figure. And he's going to go nicely in the collection. Right then, guys, that's it for this opening video. Let's just quickly get them all lined up and check them out one more time. OK, then, guys, so there's the four figures that we've opened up in today's video. We have Moroff, we have Biggs, we have the Heavy Battle Droid and we have Captain Nida. So some real random mix of figures for this video, but all of them I've needed in my collection in some way. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and thanks to my Patreon supporters and channel members. Your support means a great deal to me as always. Thank you all for watching. And we shall see you on the next one.